So, in the previous lecture, we introduced this class of strategies called mixed strategies. And these were a generalization of our earlier strategies. The earlier strategies were then called pure strategies. So, a mixed strategy, remember, was a mixed strategy is a probability distribution on on the set of pure strategies. Now, uh, for uh, we were talking in the context of a zero sum game. So, if you recall, then if uh, for the row player, then so we had a zero sum game uh, A, which denoted a zero sum game. And then for the row player, mixed strategies for the row player, this was a set capital Y which comprises of all vectors Y in now that have M rows. So, column vector of length M such that every component is greater than or equal to 0 and if you sum over all the all the all the components you get 1 and similarly. So, this was for the row player. And similarly, for the column player, you had a set Z, which was all the Z's in R n, which is the number of columns, such that Z is greater than or equal to 0 and the sum of the Zj's is equal to 1. So, these are the mixed strategies for the for the column player ok. And then we we said we let us define similarly uh, security strategies and security levels. So, the security strategy for the uh, for the for the row player for the row player it was a it was a y star in in y such that Y star transpose A Z is uh, is less uh, the maximum of Y star transpose A Z is less than equal to the maximum of Y transpose A Z for all Y in capital Y. And similarly for the column player, it is a it is a strategy Z star such that the minimum over over y in y of y transpose a z star is greater than or equal to the minimum over y in y y transpose a z for all z in capital Z. Okay, all right. So. Now, assuming that these security strategies exist, this was these were called the security levels, the mixed security levels. So, this was uh, this is what we called Vm upper bar, Vm upper bar of A, and this is what we called 
V m lower bar of it. And now, assuming such uh, uh, the security strategies and security levels exist, we got that we we derived last time this series of inequalities. Now, one thing which uh, uh, is is actually quite straightforward here is that the uh, the uh, the mixed security levels actually exist, provided I I am uh, I be a little more careful with uh, with my uh, uh, you know with with my notation here. All I need to do is I replace the max here by a soup. And the replace the min here, the min here by an inf. Then the then the uh, then the mixed securities levels will exist. But what I will show today is that actually the uh, the max the 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 way they are defined here, they also the mixed security levels in this way also exist. Okay. So so first let us let's just consider what exactly is the issue. I mean why why is there why do we need to look at this carefully? The why do we uh, why is it not automatic that a security level exists ok. So, if you see what we are doing here the uh, the y star the y star basically is an ex is the y that minimizes this expression. It minimizes the max over z of y transpose z right. So, so y star solves basically the minimum over y minimization of over y of the maximization of over z of y transpose a z. Now, if you look at this this thing here, this is now a function of y. A question really is is when does a function of y like this ok have a minimum in a over a set capital Y. Capital Y is an infinite set. So, it is possible that this function does not attain its minimum over this particular set ok. I will give you an example for instance look at this suppose this function of y here was like this ok this is y the function of y behaves this way it, it reduces up until this point let us say some point here some point y bar and then out here at this point it jumps and then increases this way. So, the value at y bar is actually this the the, the dotted value here ok. So, the function decreases till y bar, but at at y bar the value is not this this point, but rather this point ok. In that case question is does the minimum of of this function exit does this function have a minimum oh and suppose you want to minimize this function over this set y and let us say y is this you know this uh, all the this set here is y is capital y. So, does this function have a minimum over capital y? The function does not have a minimum over capital Y, but it has it has an infimum over capital Y right. So, there is a least value for this function and that least value is is this, but that least value is not attained in the set capital Y ok. So, there is no point in the set capital Y whose function value is exactly equal to the the yellow value I have marked here ok. So, so this is a case where minimum is not attained. Or infimum is not attained. What are the other reasons for which can you imagine other situations where where you may not get a minimum in the set? What other situations could arise? Sorry. Okay. So all right so i am not sure where, where, which exact case you are referring to but here's one one possible case another case where the where the infimum is there is 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 finite 
but it is not attained. So, here is for example another case. So, suppose I take the set y as an open set. So, I include, so my y now capital Y is from this point till this point. Okay, so let us say, let us suppose this is small a and this is small b. Okay, so if I consider y to be an open set, okay, then uh, you have uh, the set y. So, suppose y is an open set where it is an interval from small a to small b. So, this being an open set means that small a and small b are not included. And now, suppose the function that I am minimizing is just this. In this case, what is the least value of what is the infimum of this function over this set? The infimum of this function is this. But is there a point that attains that particular value in this set? No. If if b was in the set, then it would it would have been, but b is not in the set. Okay. So again, here. So in this case, the culprit for non-existence of or non-attainment of the infimum is actually that the set is a problem. Okay. Whereas here, in the earlier example, the the reason for the non-attainment was that the function had a, had a jump in it. Okay. The the function was broken. Whereas here, the problem is that the set is open. Okay. What about there is also a third case. Let me draw that third case also here. So, this is what I am attempting to draw here is a is a set y which is which is let us say from 0 all the way till infinity. And this function that keeps decreasing and eventually you know say let us say settles finally at some value like this. This is the value that it finally, finally settles at ok. But what do you mean by settles at that is the limiting value of this function. So, as as y goes to infinity that is the value of this function. So, now is there a, a is there a y as a real number that attains this particular value? There is not. So, it is a, cl a classic example of this would be say a function which uh, say take e, e to the minus x ok, take the function e to or e to the minus y okay, and y in capital Y which is 0 to infinity. Now, what is the infimum of this function over capital Y? it is 0, but does is there a y that gives you e to the minus y equal to 0? There is no real y like that right. So, the only way that you can get 0 is actually if you put y equal to infinity, but that is uh, you know that is effective that is not even that is not a, a real number ok. So, so the way so another culprit uh, culprit for non-existence non-attainment for the infimum in the set is is that the the set sort of runs away as you keep the function value keeps decreasing and you have to go further and further and further and it this uh, to find a lower and lower value but this process becomes endless and you eventually never get to a, uh, to you know the least value so the point is there are uh, it turns out that these are the only three possibilities so if you can plug these three possibilities then there will always be an in, uh, there a function will always have will attain its minimum over the set ok. So, the, the, these three so there is a theorem that that basically comprises of this that basically tells you this and this is the sort of starting point of may of essentially any theory in optimization and theorem is due to wire stress. Let x be a subset of Rn. And let f from x to r be continuous. If x is closed and bounded.
then f attains its infimum over x. So, co consider a function f and consider, uh, so consider a set x in which is a subset of Rn and let f be a function from x to R and f is assumed to be continuous. Now, if we, uh, if x is closed and bounded, then f must attain its infimum over x means that there must be a point in x, okay. So, that means, that is, what this means is there exists an x star which is in x such that f of x star is equal to the infimum over x, x in x of f of x. Okay. So, what this is basically uh, what this is telling you is that there is that whatever is the infimum value, this infimum value firstly is finite and it is being attained by some uh, some point in the set itself. Okay. All right. So, all we need to do now for claiming that uh, so, so since we said that y star basically solves this problem, all we have to argue is that y star actually belongs to capital Y. Because essentially this is, we want to say, say that if y, then, then, that, then it would mean that there is actually a, a minimum to this particular problem. Okay. So, in short, we want to argue that if you look at this, this function here, this function when minimized over over cap y in capital Y gives you a y is its minimum value is attained by a y star in capital Y. Okay. So, for So, means there is a y star that is there is a y star in capital Y such that if I take the max over z in capital Z of y star transpose a z that is equal to Is this clear? Okay. So, all in order to do this, what I need to basically argue is that this function here. So, the function that I am looking to minimum that I am talking about now, the function of, is a function of y and that is just this function that is the max over y transpose a z. Okay. Uh, max over sorry, max over z of y transpose a z. All right. Now, this if you remember what did we what did we see last time about what did we say last time about the about this function we wrote this out we said we said maximum if you look at the maximum over a z of y transpose a z what was this actually equal to this was the maximum over over j of y transpose a j right so why was that because y transpose a is a was a column vector z is a set of uh, is uh, capital z is the set of probability distributions and therefore the maximum is was going to be attained at when you put put j uh, when, uh, is going to be attained at the uh, with with uh, by a probability distribution that full puts full mass on the largest component so this was this was actually equal to so max over z in capital z of y transpose a z was basically was essential was equal to the largest component of the vector y transpose a okay so now let's go back and look at this boxed expression here 
So, the boxed expression then is actually is in fact equal to the max over j of y transpose a j all right. So, now what are these actually what what exactly have we written out here this this is basically this here is a collection of linear functions ok. How many linear functions are these there are uh, uh, they are indexed by j. So, there is one for every j. So, there are n linear functions and you are taking the maximum of those linear functions each which is so each of these is actually a linear function. So, linear function each of these is a linear function of y and you take what we are ta what is uh, what is written out here is the maximum of n linear functions. And so, that is actually just the maximum of finite. So, now if you take so each of these linear functions is it a continuous function of y? It is because it is after all just a linear function of y right it is it is actually a polynomial in y. So, it is a linear it is a continuous function of y and what you are doing is taking the maximum of finitely many of them. So, if you take the maximum of finitely many continuous functions what you get is a continuous function ok. So, therefore, this is a continuous function functions of y. So, therefore, this is a continuous function of y. Okay. So, the boxed expression is a continuous function of y. Now, what about so you are you, you are looking for the infimum of a continuous function now all right. Now, are you in looking for an infimum of a continuous function over now a closed and bounded set over what kind of a set we are looking for we are minimizing this over a over a set capital Y. What kind of a set is capital Y? So, the capital Y is a probability distribution is the set of all probability distribution. So, naturally it is a bounded set because every component is between 0 and 1 all right and it is also closed because if you take the limit of probability distributions it is also a probability distribution. So, capital Y is closed and and bounded and the boxed function is continuous. So, what this means is you can directly apply Weierstrass theorem now. Weierstrass theorem is basically asking you to check two things. It is asking for if it is saying that if your function is continuous and you are minimizing it over a closed and bounded set then there is a uh, there is a then its minimum is attained ok. So, the function the boxed function is continuous that is what we just argued. So, minimizing it over a closed and bounded set capital Y. So, there is going to be a Y star such that it that Y star attains the attains this infinity ok. So, in short from this basically tells us from so Weierstrass theorem. So, from Weierstrass theorem, we have that there exists a security strategy We I just argued for the row player, but similarly one can argue for the column player also. So, there exists a security strategy for each player all right. So, in short we are we are we are uh, clean we do not security strategies as we just defined actually through the uh, in fact exist all right. So, so we are so we are we therefore have we so this the the inequality that I just wrote out this whole inequality now is is now proper this chain of inequalities is now proper ok that there that v upper bar is greater than equal to v uh, v m upper bar which is greater than equal to v m lower bar which is greater than equal to v lower bar this is fine ok all right. So, now we come to the uh, we can again now that security strategies exist and so on, we can again uh, talk of a saddle point, define a saddle point
So, a saddle point in mixed strategies is a pair a y star comma z star such that. So, this is the analogous set of inequalities holds. So, y star transpose a z is less than equal to uh, is less than equal to y star transpose a z star and y star transpose a z star is it in turn less than equal to y transpose a z a z star which means that. So, a saddle point is a pair of strategies such that if if uh, if the column player is playing z star the row player would want to respond with y star and if the row player is playing y star the column player would want to respond with z star ok. So, we so we now have we have now defined a saddle point in mixed strategies and as before we we again have that uh, there exists a saddle point y star z star if and only if v m upper bar is equal to v m lower bar. The proof follows exactly the way we did for pure strategies ok. So, so we just defined a saddle point and we said that well that a saddle point exists if and only v m upper bar is equal to v m lower bar. Moreover, we will also have all the other properties if v m upper bar is equal to v m lower bar then saddle points will be comprised of security strategies. And, and so on all of that and every pair of security strategies is a saddle point all of that will, will also hold ok. But remember we have not yet so this all we have we have saying is that there exists a saddle point if and only if this holds ok. We just defined what a saddle point should be and we said that where we can find a saddle point if and only if this this equation holds ok. So, the crux of the matter now is that we have basically come to the exactly the same juncture that we had earlier except that we now are in a different space. Earlier we were talking of pure strategies we are now talking of we are talking of mixed strategies we have security levels uh, again defined in terms security levels and security strategies all defined in terms of mixed strategies ok. So, earlier what we showed what we found was there are games ok there are matrices A for which V upper bar is not equal to v lower ok and we we extended the space to mix strategies and then we got this this chain of inequality. Now, what I will show today is that this here this is this in fact is, is an equality 